Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Alternative Platform. Today with me, we'll be discussing the topic of Islam and Christianity in the modern world. Uh, with me today, we have some very distinguished guests, um, very, uh, very renowned in their own right and in their own fields. Uh, on my left side today, we have uh, Adnan Rashid of the Hittin Institute. Uh, thank you for coming and welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, to my right, we have Jay Smith, uh, a leading Christian e evangelist uh, who's very um, active in uh, missionary work uh, throughout the country and uh, abroad as well, who has some background um, in uh, evangelizing uh, cr specifically Muslims uh, and um, uh, people from the Asian subcontinent. And uh, this is his speciality. So uh, hopefully today uh, we're going to get off to a, an explosive, uh, entertaining, lively uh, debate show. So um, welcome and thank you very much for coming down, Jay Smith. Thank you, Kelly. Right, so um, let's get straight down to it. Um, let's kick off with um, really the relevance of uh, religion in the modern world. Um, against the background of scientific research and discoveries and facts, people may argue that, well, really, religion is dead. Um, definitely Islam, Christianity, um, old ancient religions, they have nothing really to offer modern society uh, and they're quite irrelevant. So uh, why are we even talking about religion when uh, they're not provable? and they, they just come down to a matter of faith. Um, so I'd like to start off by asking the, the Muslim speaker, um, is there any justification for believing in religion, and uh, particularly Islam for you? Um, do you have any evidences or proofs um, for your, your, your belief, or is it a question of faith? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah ma ba'd. Thank you very much for inviting me, first of all. Um, this is an interesting question you have put to me. Uh, is there any um, reason for us to believe in Islam uh, or in any religion for that matter? Uh, I think the fundamental question is one has to um, first find out whether there is a God or not. If one believes in a God, uh, if one is convinced that there is a God who exists, who controls the world, who has designed this universe uh, as it's so complex, then the next part is very easy and then one, one has to go back to the messages uh, which claim to be from God, such as Judaism, uh, Christianity and Islam. And one, uh, once one examines all three of them, one comes to realize that um, Islam is the one, in my humble opinion, which makes the most sense, uh, which we will come to discuss. Mm -hmm. Islam uh, has a powerful text called uh, the Quran, which is uh, uh, authentically preserved. Um, the Quran which I carry in my hand today comes from the Prophet himself. There, has, there, there are no changes in it, no text has been added, no, nothing has been subtracted as we find with the Bible. Um, and then there are some uh, prophecies within the Quran which were fulfilled to, to letter. There are scientific miracles in the Quran, there are miracles of uh, l uh, linguistic nature in the Quran, and there are many more reasons I can cite uh, in order to prove the case of Islam. Okay, very good. So you believe that there, there is good reason to believe in Islam and you have evidences uh, to, to prove your case. Um, Jay, I would like to ask you uh, from a Christian perspective, um, I've got a lot of Christian friends and uh, I, I speak to a lot of uh, Christians, and uh, often what I hear is it does come down to faith. Um, would you disagree with that? Um, and would you say that no, there, there, there is proof and evidence beyond faith that, that, that can um, prove to other people, non-Christians, non that uh, you certainly have the truth beyond doubt? And if so, what are those evidences? Yeah, this is a, this is a great question you're asking, Khalil, and I, th and I thank you, uh, Adnan, for uh, basically creating the paradigm that he's going to use today uh, to decide what is truth for him. And I think the same, we need to do that to be, even to begin this discussion. If you're going to talk about religious truth, are you going to talk about truth via visa via either Christianity or Islam, you've got to have a revelation that supports that, a revelation that undergirds that, gives authority to it. Now, Adnan is very clear that for him, as you've heard, uh, his revelation would be the Quran, and I would imagine the traditions of the Sunnah of the Prophet, that, how the, that is how the Prophet lived it. So the traditions and the Quran would be his revelation. For me, I have to go back to the Bible, and my Bible uh, is very clear that that's where I need to go to to find out how I'm to live today. As far as relevancy, I want to know whether or not the Bible 
is relevant for today. Now, when I go to the Bible, I have to go to the New Testament. Uh, the New Testament is my paradigm. It's my authority. The Old Testament is still important. It's what God was doing in 1300, 1400 B.C. But what the New Testament is where I have to go to find out whether or not uh, how I'm to live. And when I look at the New Testament, uh, it's terrific to realize it is probably the most relevant uh, text uh, for not only for me, I would say for the rest of the world, but it is only a text that is geared for me. It is only the text for those who uh, adhere to it. It's not a text that imposes itself on any other. That what I would say would be a distinction between the Quran and the New Testament. Uh, the Quran is a universal document and Adnan's going to support it and he'll do a great job of supporting it and showing how it's relevant for today. And I think the discussion will revolve around that in much, uh, much of what we're going to do today. But I thank God for the New Testament. I thank God for the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, not only because he is the model, he is the man I follow, but he, I believe, is the most relevant model. Uh, sure. For the 21st century, sure. for Britain, and I would say even for Bangladesh. Sure, very good. Thank you very much for that. If I may, if I may uh, fine tune my question a little bit more um, to really uh, get at the heart of what I was trying to to, to say or ask, rather, um, uh, especially from okay, I'm going to act as the devil's advocate. I'm going to uh, mm -hmm. effectively um, act as as an atheist. Now, uh, to a lot of atheists and a lot of not irreligious people or non-religious people. <coughs> The first criticism that they have of any religion, they, they put all religions into one, uh, into one pothole, so to speak, and, and they say they're all a matter of, um, of faith. Um, today, in today's society, given, like, as I was saying, a scientific progress, um, there are no evidences to prove your claims and to prove your religions. Before we talk about what Jesus may have said or may not have said, what he had done or may not have uh, had done or the Prophet Muhammad for, for, that, uh, for that matter, um, how do we know that Jesus in fact said those things and did those things? How do we know that we can trust and rely on the Bible 100%? How do we know that this is the inerrant word of God? What is the proof? To somebody who wants to be satisfied intellectually, um, before you quote me verses, if, for example, I don't even believe in the Bible, it's just, you'll just go through one ear and come out the other. The, surely the basis, the foundation has to be, you have to prove that the Bible is the Word of God before we can start discussing the, uh, the internal uh, text or, uh, and what they mean and, and how they're to be interpreted. And I would level the same question to both the Muslim as well as Hindus, Buddhists, whatever. If anybody claims to have the truth, what is the evidence? I would like to really start with that basis before we talk about what Jesus was purported to have said or not. So uh, again, if I may ask you again, if somebody asks you that question, how would you prove to them? Is there proof? Or, or would you put your hands up and just say sincerely, you know what, I can't prove it to you intellectually, but it is a matter of faith, and these are the reasons why you should believe in it. Oh, so this is a whole different talk you want to talk about today than relevancy. No, I, I think before we talk, yeah, it, it should be both. It should be both. Because surely we cannot talk about the relevancy of something uh, before we've even proven that... No, it, I think we should wait that for another debate, because that is an entire, entirely different debate as right. which, uh, which you can prove as historically accurate. That debate would take an entire, entire hour, at least probably more, if you want to go into that. What I would like to do is, it, which is the more relevant faith? Uh, again, if you're going to ask in, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, if are, are you going to ask me that question? Sure, and sure. They will ask that question. How can you prove that the Bible, the New Testament, that I consider to be my authority, how can you prove that it's relevant for today? I'd be very careful and say, listen, I'm not asking that you think it's relevant, but let me just th throw a few questions back at you. When you look and see how we live today, uh, when you look and see how the fact that uh, there there is a moral agent, we are all moral creatures. Where do you think that comes from? How is it that everybody knows what is right and wrong? Now, there may be, de there may be different definitions of what is right and wrong, but we all know that there are, good, uh, there are values, and there are absolute values, sure. like incest, is, uh, the fact that that's wrong, uh, pedophilia, that, that fact that's wrong. Why is it that every culture knows that's wrong? That seems to come from a higher moral agent. On that discussion, then, mm -hmm. I would say the Bible and the Quran would agree that that moral agent comes from my primal cause, and that first cause must be God. Sure. Okay. Now, That's now, it. now yep. coming, coming back one mm -hmm. next step further, then you go back and say, oh, yes, but uh, that depends on the age, that depends on the text, that context. And so it, it really comes down to whoever decides what is good or bad for that day. And I said, there is the problem again. Because if you're an atheist asking me that question, why I go back to a certain text, why I go back to the New Testament to find out who that God is and also what the moral standard is, I would say very carefully, for the, for the atheists, they don't have anything to go back to but the 51%. That means the majority. And I am scared of the majority because it was the majority in Germany that dictated and stipulated that Hitler was correct and the Jews must be eradicated. 
Uh, and when you ever get the majority, they go against what is our absolutes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would come back to any atheist that even ask that question like you just asked, Khalid, and say, you need a God that's behind it. You need somebody that's bigger than just you and me and something that's bigger than the 51%. Okay. Now that, I, I, then the question comes to which God are we talking about? Yeah. Is it the God that you see in the Quran or is it the God we see in the Bible? I have the two books here. I always make sure my Bible's bigger than my Quran for obvious reasons. And I think it's great to see his Bible's bigger than his Quran too. Uh, because for, as far as I'm concerned, this is the book I think that shows the God that's relevant for today. Because the God I see in the New Testament, the God, that, the person of Jesus Christ, that's the man who I have been asking for 27 years for Muslims all over the world. Show me something wrong with Jesus Christ. You can't. Um, no, uh, and, you can't. In very and so for yes, that reason, I would say yeah. that's the person yes. I would go I think what Jay is trying to do in this debate is he's trying to mold the direction of this debate, uh, which wouldn't be fair. We have a set topic, uh, which is Islam and Christianity in the modern world. So for us to be in the modern world, we must satisfy the masses into believing in these scriptures. Mm. So before we even do that, we must substantiate to them that these scriptures are in fact divine. If we can't do that, then there is no point of even discussing uh, the, this debate today. So w b before we even begin... Asking, is that what the debate is today? Are we changing the topic now? Okay, no, okay, look, okay, maybe that's my fault. Let me clarify. Yes. Sure, sure. Okay, that. that's fine. That's Let's fine. No problem. The topic I okay. was told about sure. is relevance. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, the interesting I see, he's brought the book on the authority of, the, of his scriptures. So it looks like you two have already agreed on this beforehand. Well, no, I thought that um, uh, you were aware of no, the of the title it's as well. The first time okay, let, let me clarify. Well, we can do that, but not today. No problem. No problem. Okay. I that sure, sure. Jay, your, your, your language is English language, obviously, and the title is uh, self-explanatory. Were well, you uh, aware of the title? Islam and Christianity okay, okay. in the modern world. This right. is what I was given. Okay, which is well, more relevant today, Islam or Christianity? Well, the mail which is, which was sent to me and to you, you <laughs> were also seen in that. the mail and the Shall topic. Shall I get okay. it out? Should we yes. look at it? Okay. Well, well that, 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 we would be wasting time there. Okay, okay let me... Listen, that is, I mean, your topic sure. is good. If you want to talk about the Bible versus the Quran, sure. which is the more authoritative historically, yeah. that's an entirely different no, debate. No, I'm, I'm not even and talking about historically. Okay, okay, okay. let me clarify my position, really. I mean, uh, 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 what I want to discuss is okay, Islam and Christianity in the modern world. Yeah. Right. Now, we need to have uh, some, 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 some foundation on which to build. Before we can talk about the relevancy, I just wanted to touch on, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, yeah. which I'm sure, I mean, you've been doing this for years and decades. Absolutely. And I would in say a nutshell, what are the evidences uh, that lead you to believe that the Bible is a moral code and should be? Let's do that. Really, the evidences. That's what and I'm not even asking you to prove that God exists, because let's assume, because you're, you're a Muslim, you're a Christian, we let's assume that uh, God does they exist. They all agree that God exists. Yeah. So <laughs> let's just assume, because uh, that was the subject of last uh, last episode's talk, whether God exists or not. Let's assume that God exists. Now, as you said, the important question is which scripture do we follow, and right. do we use proof as Within a criterion? Within those scriptures. Right. Do we use proof as a criterion or do we use emotion? Do we use blind faith? That's really what I'm trying let's to... Let's come back to these two books. Sure. And let's ask, which book really gives us the better foundation for today? That's really the, uh, the question of relevancy. On that issue, I think we, we can really go with right. it. Are we ready to do that? Well, the thing is this. I mean, that... I mean, Personally, I think that's, that's a fallacious, really, question because it's not about which is better because ultimately that's going to be subjective. What you deem to be better, m he might disagree with. And he so will you disagree. You will never get anywhere because when, that's we talk what debates about, are for. When, we, when we talk about good and bad, they are ultimately subjective. What I want to start with is the premise, the premise of your whole religion and yours as well, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to ask him as well. I'm open to it. Give us your evidences why I should believe in the Quran. Why should I believe that this is from God? And why should I believe that that is from God? Absolutely. For me, let's in, in, do that. Let's yes, go with me, that. Yes. On uh, that level, then we can Okay, debate. let's go ahead. So, um, uh, who would like to start? Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and start. Okay, sure. I think, and, and, uh, and, uh, and I think the people out there, I imagine the, mo the majority of people who are watching the show are Muslims. Am I yes, correct that on that? Is true. This is my first time that at NTV. Yes. Uh, so I would just want to say uh, some of the things I may say may uh, injure, may be difficult for some of the Muslims to hear. I apologize in advance. Please forgive me if I do injure you. I do not intend to. Uh, Adnan and I are very good friends. You're going to see us shake hands afterwards. Uh, where you are, we, do, it's, we do not have I'm a problem with each other. <laughs> and we have debated many times before. Now, what I have found, and this is what I think is in important. When I read the Quran, I find some difficulties with the Quran, and I know for but you sorry, and for... Before you continue, rather than starting by refuting another religion, surely by refuting uh, and disproving another religion, that doesn't automatically make your religion or your absolutely scripture right. correct. Absolutely so right. if we could um, start logically, you want to start, start with logically, the Bible. let's start why I should believe in the Bible first. Let's say I don't even believe in the Quran. I don't trust him. I don't trust any Muslims. This is, as far as I'm concerned, a man-made religion. 
I want to first ask you, how can you convince me? That, why should I become a Muslim? Uh, why should I become a Christian? Sorry. Thank you. Make prove sure you get to the right, me, right yeah, Prove to me first <laughs> that the Bible um, is the inerrant 100% word of God before you uh, refute other religions. Okay. There's a whole that. litany of areas that I could use in the Bible. Uh, let's just start with two areas I think that most people are questioning today, and that is the areas concerning violence and peace and the areas concerning women in the Bible. When you look at violence and peace in the Bible, you will see that the Bible basically goes from violence to peace. Right. Uh, it starts in the Old Testament with violence. There's an awful lot of violence there. And then in the New Testament, it's com there's a complete cessation of violence. No longer are we permitted to use violence. Does that make it the inspired Word of God? I didn't say that. Right. That's not the question. Okay. You're saying what is, what is, let's get to make sure, I'm going to have yep. to tell you Khalil, no. what are we talking today? Sure, I just want you to, in a nutshell. You're asking me no, what is in it, a, no, it, really, it, it this people. Is my, this is my problem with all religious people, with all religions, so even Muslims. If a Muslim can't prove to me that the Quran is the word, listen, you might, you might disagree with his evidences, but at least he can claim to have evidences. That's the first thing. Okay. I just want to hear the evidences, why I should believe that the, the, I'm the, getting the there. Bible is the word of God. Are you going to interrupt every but, time? But I, is, I don't want it to become, really, I don't want it to become violence and peace and women, because that doesn't prove anything. It doesn't oh, prove it anything. does. We, we, we can go okay. It does. Listen, it does. Listen, 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 it does, it does. listen, the Buddhists are very peaceful people, but does that mean that Buddhism is the right religion of God? If people are asking that question today and they want to know which is the religion that, that actually answers these questions, there are many others I could go to Khalil. Mm. I'm going to start with violence. Sure. Give me the right to do that, and I'm going to go with women's issues, and then I'm going to go to some other issues as well. Well, we know what you, I mean, we know what you're going to say ultimately, but what I'm trying to get at is... Do these bother you, Khalid? Well, do these issues bother you? Well, no, but the thing is, um, I'm, I want to I wanna ask you why I should believe in Christianity, why I should believe that the, the Bible is the Word of God. I you can't say because, well, this is the thing, atheists... They're very moral people. Khalil, am I, am I debating you or am I debating others? No, because I want to direct the debate in the right way. You don't like where I'm going with this. No, because I, the, ultimately the question is, what are your evidences? If you could just We're going to give you evidence no, right no, now. Just give me your evidence question. why I should believe in the Bible. Khalil, Simple. Word, when, you, when, you look at, when you look at the Bible, you will see the New Testament is probably the best document we have in the world today for peace. Right. That's why it's one of the best evidences because everybody, I know everybody watching this show wants peace. Right. Listen. Tony Blair wanted peace, whether, he, whether you believe him or not. The politicians do want peace, whether you like that or not. Most everybody standing outside the studio does want peace. Where are you going to find it? I would not suggest you go to this book to find peace. You're not right. going to find it there, but you are going to find it with this book. That's right. why I say that is one of the, probably the strongest evidences that this is not only a relevant revelation for today, it is probably the best and the only relevant, uh, relevant uh, revelation today because of the fact it can not only shows how, how we're to live peacefully, it models it in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, goodness sakes, I have asked for 27 years, show me something irrelevant about him. You can't do that with Jesus. The other thing is, when you look and see what the New Testament says about how he lived, how he treated women, how he treated minorities, how he treated people who were strangers in his midst, the equality that is there. We all want to be equal. Where do you get those verses from? You get them straight from the New Testament. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. For there is no difference between man or woman, slave or or free, Greek or Gentile, all are equal in Jesus Christ. When you go to and look at how women are treated, now because today people want to say, is there a book that actually shows not only equality, but allows women to be honored? I say, come on back to the New Testament and look and see how Jesus treated Mary and Martha. There was Martha in the kitchen, Mary was sitting at his feet. Jesus was a rabbi. He was allowing Mary to be sit at his feet, even though Martha wanted to come back to the kitchen. Jesus says, Martha, you go back, Mary, you right, stay see, here. This is, this is my, I, okay, I have a question? If I, if, okay, let me just, because sure. if I may, uh, if I may, uh, interrupt once again this is my problem with religious people Muslims and Muslims as I, as I said to you when you ask them for proof they will give a very nice story they'll give uh, a lot of emotional sort of reasons why perhaps I was mean, that emotional for, for example practical solutions effectively what it boils down to is practical solutions for for modern day life which I agree with you perhaps that is the case but if I decide to go on preaching about peace and love does that make me a prophet that's what I'm trying to get at is that not does what that, people want to hear no but, is that but, what people no, are what, asking no, no, religions but, but, to but say but surely look, just preaching good things does not necessarily make it divine doesn't necessarily make it a revelation doesn't make me a prophet if George Bush talks about peace or Tony Blair talks about peace doesn't mean that they have I been inspired Khalid, by God. Khalid, what, what, what's okay. happening? So I, if, I appreciate your, your concerns. Right. I think if, if we continue like this, the debate's yeah. not going to get okay. anywhere. As Jay has already started the debate, yeah. according to those sure. evidences in the Bible, sure. um, if Jay doesn't want to go down a, a particular alley, we, we okay. let's see okay. if he can so, quote so, verses okay. like that okay. in the Quran. Okay, let's, okay. let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's change like the subject. Quran. Quran. Let's change the subject. The subject really what I want to go initially was evidences. Let's assume then, okay, if, if you are not willing to offer evidences or you Those are great fine. evidences. Now let's see if you well, can quote those okay, in the Quran. Fine. Sure, okay, sure. so let's, let, let's assume that... Um, uh, Khalid, you don't believe those are evidences. Been, no, absolutely not. Listen, if you've studied philosophy, 
you would know that that it's not even a logical there's no logical connection <laughs> but between <laughs> saying that uh, we should treat women equally that, that means is that amazing that no. I mean that's something that's universe that is yes, a exactly. universal but paradigm today and thing, where do you think it comes from no, it Bible comes is uniquely is from the bible because right. no. you don't find that in the quran you cannot find equality of women uh, and men in the Quran. Right. That's why I would say it is not relevant for today well, because men true. and women are completely well, that's not true, Jay. That's, on two different levels okay, in the Quran. Let's, let's okay, let's forget the evidence. Let's okay. talk. Let's of, do that okay, right let's now. Let's no. do women in the Bible versus women in the Quran, well, and let's see which again, is more relevant for again, today. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you, you are trying to change the course of this debate. I want to keep it as general as possible, as the topic uh, clearly states: Islam and Christianity. In the which is more world. relevant? Let's talk about that. Yeah. In the modern world, uh, a woman uh, requires. Uh, a right to divorce. Well, you would agree with that, right? In the modern world, a woman requires um, to be treated equally. Uh, I, uh, I would not agree with the man. first one, but oh, go ahead. Well, okay, I, I know why you don't agree with that, because uh, uh, there is a problem for you there. Uh, the Bible... Oh, it's not a problem Matthew, for me. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 30 onwards, we read the law of divorce given by Jesus Christ. Yes. He says, you are not allowed to divorce. Right. Except for the reasons of... Um, Adultery or right. um, immoral okay. acts. Okay, mm -hmm. so if a woman is divorced, she cannot be remarried, and if anyone marries her, causes okay. her to commit adultery. So, in your world, which you are uh, proposing uh, for us to live in, uh, a woman who was divorced, she has no right. In to Christianity, let's get make sure. I don't say the world. No, you're proposing the Bible um, as the word of God. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. Can I, make, to, can I make? Can I make a, sure, a, quick, sure. a quick? We have uh, to just. We have to. We have to go to a break right now. I do apologize for that. Sure, sure. Um, and just before we go to a break, maybe we should also discuss uh, the direction of the subject. And I'm I'm happy to change it as long as we can have a fruitful discussion. Um, so um, I hope uh, you've been. Uh, um, uh, you, you've been satisfied so far as to what you've uh, been watching and uh, st stay tuned and uh, come back for some more. Um, so what we, we, what, what we'll probably do is we'll probably change the topic to um, practical solutions to the modern world, relevance to the modern world, there you as go. opposed to evidences, um, because that well, ultimately, if, if you're happy are the, with that. Both are the same. I think we well, should Well, for me, it to um, I'll, I'll discuss with you during break time why I don't see the connection between evidence and uh, practical solution. We can find practical solutions to a lot of man-made problems, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they come from God. See, the, but anyway, we'll discuss that later on. Um, viewers, I hope you uh, come back uh, after the break, so uh, stay tuned and uh, see you in a few minutes. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome back to the Alternative Platform. I hope you were here for the last uh, section. Um, I'd like to uh, promptly continue where we left off. Um, and I'd like to go to Adnan now. He hasn't had much to say. Um, if I could ask you, Adnan, um, I'm going to speak as though I was a layman, a skeptic, right? Somebody who's not sure what, what to believe in, what scripture to follow. Um, let's say, for argument's sake, I haven't been satisfied by the evidence uh, that Jay, to my, to my uh, um, uh, standard uh, that Jay uh, um, offered to me, what can you do to prove to me that the Quran is the word of God? What can you do to prove to me that Islam is the religion uh, that I should and I must believe in? What's, what's your evidence then? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In a nutshell, uh, Quran in chapter 15, verse number 9, makes a promise, makes a claim. Inna nahnu nazdalna wa inna lahula hafidun. We have indeed revealed the scripture and we will guard it from corruption. Then another place, Quran states, لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ومن خلفه Batil, falsehood, will not affect this book from behind or front. In other words, this book will be preserved as it stands today, in the time of the Prophet. So, this promise was fulfilled to, to the letter. Uh, Prophet died uh, in the year 632 CE, and within one year of his death, the Quran was compiled by his closest companion Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu in one codex and then the Arabs were reciting this Quran in different dialects and in different recitations Uthman one of the earliest companions of Prophet Muhammad united them on one recitation the recitation of the Qurayshis and the Quran which I carry today uh, comes straight from the Prophet himself and it has been perfectly perfectly preserved perfectly well preserved now Christian scholars themselves have actually accepted and testify to this very fact. But before you continue, if I may, if sure. I may just interrupt you, sure. um, for me that's not a satisfactory evidence oh. that any script does not necessarily make it inspired of God. Sure. I mean, I could write a story now, a fairy tale story, and uh, make sure that it's preserved in some kind of a glass box for uh, 200 years, 300 years. Does that mean that now, now I'm a prophet of God? Um, so 
that doesn't really wash with me. So sure. um, do you have any other evidence before? I mean, let's say you prove that the Quran has been preserved for 1400 years. So what? Big deal. A lot of skeptics will be looking at you and saying, well, now you expect me to b believe that the guy who, who, who came out with the Quran was a prophet of God. Come on, give us a break. This is what I'm really getting at. In the modern world, people are not as stupid. Well, well, well if, you let me, if you let me finish, sure, sure, you get, get the sure, answer. Sure. Um, my, 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 my contention is that the Quran is preserved right. as uh, it promises. Uh, in, the, in, in itself, okay. Now the second contention is well, when while we know that Quran has been preserved and it has been transmitted authentically from the Prophet, now we can scrutinize the the verses of the Quran um, uh, with skepticism. We we can be skeptics. Quran itself invites people to question it. Afalayat al Dabarun al Quran. Do you not even ponder upon the Quran? If it wasn't from God Almighty, there would have been problems in it. So we go and scrutinize the test, text, and no one can turn around and say, oh, this text is not from the Prophet. So what, if you found a fault, it is not from the Prophet. Okay? No one can claim that today. The Quran is from the Prophet, so we need to find faults. So when we go to the Quran, instead of uh, finding faults, what we find instead is um, a massive chunk of information, which is uh, amazing, it's fascinating, for example, scientific evidence. In chapter... Uh, 23 of the Quran, Surah Nur, uh, verse 13 to 15, we are given embryonic stages. An embryo taking uh, uh, different forms and shapes in, in a mother's womb. Okay, And these stages are microscopic in the details. Dr. Keith Moore, a professor of uh, um, embryology in the University of uh, Toronto, one of the leading authorities in this field, stated in his book that um, the, the, uh, the child, the fetus, uh, uh, the muscles of uh, the bones are formed first, and then the bones are clothed with flesh, the muscles themselves. Now, when Dr. Keith Moore was confronted um, with these verses by some of the scholars, he said that it is impossible for a seventh century uh, man uh, living in the seventh century Arabia, Arabian desert, uh, to come up with these verses because he could not have known this information in those days when there were no microscopes. The, even if he carried out any desecrations of animals or uh, any human uh, um, human beings, he wouldn't have known this inform information because it's so delicate, it's so detailed. Other evidences, prophecies in the Quran, for example. Um, can, can I respond, can yeah, I yeah, respond yeah, to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah, I, we know Keith. We know Keith Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been in contact with him in Toronto, and we asked him why he said this. He said, "Well, actually, um, I didn't realize what the Muslims were going to do with this. I had no idea that so they were he did looking." Say this. Oh yeah, certainly he did. And he went beyond that. He has gone beyond that since then. Uh, and, he's, and he is well aware of the fact where the, Musa, where the Quran got this from. This is not new to the Quran. This is not unique to the Quran. Uh, if you go back to Galen uh, in the second century, actually, uh, he was a Jewish embryologist who wrote in, in Greek. And he actually gave the same exact four stages that you see in the Quran, which suggests that the Quran has borrowed it from Galen. So if you're going to say that this is miraculous, then give credit to Galen, who was a Jew. Uh, uh, a Jew writing in Greek, whose writings in, uh, were there in Stesiphon. Stesiphon was the city uh, now, that we now know today as Baghdad, where this was well not only taught, but those who put the Quran together actually borrowed it from. And what we're finding, many of the material that he, uh, that Adnan's going to use today, that he would call proofs that give it relevancy. I'm not sure if they give it relevancy. It just gives it historical authority. Uh, almost all of these writings, a good number of them, we can now trace back to other writings. And we know who wrote them. We know why they were written. Uh, many of them are apocryphal Jewish writings, uh, like Surah 27, Ayah 17 to 44, the story of Solomon and Sheba. That story has, can be found, has been pulled out the of the second, Tabas, uh, mm -hmm. second uh, Talmud of, of Esther. Uh, the story of uh, Abraham in Surah 21, uh, that from 51 to 71, uh, that has been taken almost straight out of the, Taba of Rab, uh, the, uh, the Talmud of Rabbah. Mm -hmm. uh, the story that you find in Surah 5, Ayah 31 and 32 of Solomon and uh, of, sure. of Cain and Abel, These, uh, that story comes from the Talmud of Eliezer. And in, inter interestingly, verse 32, which is about the blood of Abel, uh, can be found from the Bar Sanhedrin, written in the 5th century. This, these are just borrowings from other texts. Sure. To say that somehow this text, this particular one, uh, is, a, is a, a miracle that, gives the, that shows that it's authoritative, I would say, well, if you're going to call it a miracle, stop and ask yourself. Even Keith Moore realizes that now it's quite easy to find uh, what uh, alaka stage is, what alaka means, if it just means chewed flesh. Any a miscarriage would be, look like chewed flesh. The zygote stage, listen, even Herodotus, I'm sorry, not Herodotus, um, uh, the, the, Greek, the Greek philosopher, Aristotle, Aristotle and also 
Hippolytus, the two of them, were talking about stages, about 15 stages, of which they also mentioned a similar stage to the zygote stage, right. which we, they would not have been able to observe with the, with the, uh, with the, the human eye. Quickly. Now, these don't make, make, sure, make it a miracle. What they do say is they were very accurate. I would say Galen was very accurate sure. in the second sure. century. He made a mistake, though, because even Keith Moore now admits that he said that the third stage would be the bone stage followed by the meat stage. One does not precede the other. What he now realizes, and he's now admitting publicly, is that the two form together simultaneously. Now, that error that was there in Galen's writing is also incorporated into sure. the Quran. You made a good point there, and I'd like to touch on that, and I'd like you to respond as well. He made a good point. Mm -hmm. um, and in fairness, um, if it were the case that these so-called scientific miracles were exclusive to the Quran, then maybe you might have a stronger case. Sure. But however, when you dig um, uh, deeper and research into, uh, into history, you'll find that, uh, for example, the ancient Mayans and the ancient Egyptians, they were very advanced for mm. their ages, to the point where some people believe that aliens came down and assisted them in, mm. in developing some of the things that they have. And sure. does that necessarily make them divine? Um, how would you... Uh, that, that's a good point. First of all, let me deal with uh, Jay's point regarding Galen. Galen, Galen's embryology, have you studied it, Jay, yourself? Have I, I studied it in depth? Uh, have you studied it? Actually, I've, we have three people who are all have medical degrees uh, who have uh, are written about have, have it. Have I'm not. I'm not an expert in that field at all. I have studied it. And you're an expert. I, 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 I have studied Galen's embryology. Do you it's understand it. medicine? Well, I have studied it in English language. Gale, all right, Galen give us wrote. your evidence and we'll take it back and see if it could stand up. I didn't up. bring Galen's book with me, but I have studied it. Okay. And Galen's embryology is nowhere near the Quranic embryology. <laughs> and and I'm, are you suggesting that Dr. Keith, uh, uh, Keith Moore didn't know what Galen was writing prior to Muhammad? He is. Uh, and he's it, aware of the fact that sure. this has been borrowed so from let, Galen. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me respond to your other points you have made. So Galen's embryology, people who are listening to me right now can go and check whether Galen's embryology is anywhere near the Quranic embryology. Coming back to Aristotle. Aristotle believed that a fetus is formed by the mixture of menstrual blood and semen. Is that what the Quran says? Galen followed on from Aristotle. No, I okay. didn't say okay. Aristotle okay. is but the one where the... You didn't even know what Aristotle believed in. If you knew, you would have uh, uh, stated... Did I say that Aristotle was actually the predecessor to the Quranic material? No, I said Galen is the predecessor. Uh, what Galen I'm saying is the did idea you know of the that? zygote, the earliest one that... Did you know that Galen took from Aristotle? I'm sure he did. And also there you go. Hippolytus, let, let, let both of them, because they had, they had many more stages sure. than what Galen had. The points you raised otherwise, um, Prophet Muhammad copied the story of Solomon from the Jewish book of Rabbah, infancy gospel, then Syriac legends, then uh, other Aramaic works, then Alexander legend, then the seven sleepers of Ephesus mm -hmm. from Jacob, mm -hmm. Jacob of Sarok. I can give you a longer list than you have given me, right? I have scrutinized... You want some more? I can I give have, you some I, more. I have scrutinized <laughs> every single case you have documented. If we were to claim, or if you were to claim, mm. that Prophet Muhammad copied all of these texts... I don't say Muhammad did. Okay. I don't think Muhammad oh, so had anything to do with it. Now? I have very little, I doubt, I have very little, uh, there's very little credibility that Muhammad was the one okay, that received let me, let me ask you a question. Do you believe Muhammad knew any other language than Arabic? I, let me restate what I just said. I don't believe Muhammad is the one that gave us the Quran. Who, uh, where does the Quran I believe the Quran from? was put together much later. Now that's going to be a huge debate that we need to do at another time. Well, let's see what your scholars have to say. Okay, uh, but, but can uh, you address his question? Sure, he, he did sure. say, though, or at least he implied, that uh, there are many things in the Quran that were borrowed from well, let me, uh, let me, other let, scriptures. Let, let me respond yeah. to that question quickly. All of these theories have been ex uh, examined by the scholars, okay, such as Montgomery Watt. Uh, one of the leading scholars of the Quran, which is, uh, this is a book I'm carrying, uh, uh, written by him, Introduction to the Quran. Montgomery Ward is an authority to go to. Jay Smith is not an authority on the Quran. Montgomery Ward stated that if we were to believe in the boring theory, it's a hypothesis, there is no proof for it whatsoever, it's a hypothesis, then we must also believe that Muhammad وسلم, had a library of Alexandrian magnitude in his house in Mecca. Mm. Okay? Muhammad was openly declared to be an illiterate man. He didn't know how to read and write. Quran is very explicit. You're that. just oh, making my point. Uh, wait, so, okay. So your point is that Muhammad did not borrow. I think that this is put together at a much later date. You're right. right. Redacted back onto right. Muhammad. Okay. Well, you, you're taking that theory from Wonsboro, I assume. From quite a few others as well. Wonsboro uh, is the first one to enunciate right. that in the 1970s. Did, did, you know Wonsboro, did, you, did you know Wonsboro has been uh, rubbish by uh, the major academics in this field, such as Michael Marx? Even, uh, Do you Pim know Michael Marx? Yes, I know him We're personally. We're good friends. Uh, I, I am a good Would friend. You like Would you like me to quote Michael Marx? Would you like to bring him on the show? Do you want me to quote? Uh, do Why don't you bring him on the show and ask him if he has rubbished uh, 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 John Wansborough? But, but this is the thing about, this is my problem with quoting so-called experts, because you'll always get some people who support them, Understood. and some people who, who, who rubbish them, and surely that's not an evidence. Let me ask you this, well. and, and let uh, me ask... Uh, uh, let me quickly finish my point. Yeah. Uh, so, boring theory 
raises more problems than solutions. We must accept if, Quran, if the Quran comes from Muhammad, which is what Montgomery Watt believes. Okay, Montgomery Watt states on page number 51 of, of, of his book, Introduction to the Quran, on general grounds then it may be concluded that the Uthmanic revision was honestly carried out. Who was Uthman? One of the earliest companions of Prophet Muhammad, who was married to two of his daughters. Can you date okay. that? Can you see when, when was that one, published? One second, one second. Carried out and re reproduced as closely as was possible to the men in charge of it. What Muhammad had delivered. This is very clear. This is explicit. What's Muhammad the date on Revolt that? And Dr. Bell. The, can, this can you is give the date still, on that? This book is still being published today. Can you give the date on day. when he wrote that? This book? When did he write that? When did he give write me the, this? Give it. I'll, sh I'll, I'll ask you. What, when's the but date okay, he wrote okay, that? That's really quite relevant. Okay, what I want to ask you, 1970s. Jay, if I can You're ask 40 you, years out of date. On this point. We, we on haven't this discovered any new manuscripts. We oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. On, the, on, on this point, Even Jay, here in London, just a few months ago, you, were you there at the Quranic uh, Symposium? So, yes. Were you there? Did you yes, hear? I was there. Did you hear about the Sana manuscript? Did you hear about the palimpsest? Was, by, by whom? Are the ones that are being now being Which studied. Which scholar are you talking about? They're, they're being I, studied I in the Sorbonne and also in Princeton. Well, can you name the scholars? I don't know their names. Well, two women. I know their names. What Michael names? Marx was there. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about the two women who are now doing studies on the palimpsest. Fr the French lady. The French okay, lady. What's her yes, name? I, I, spo I spoke to her personally. And Jay. what is her conclusion? Her conclusion is that there was an undertext, Absolutely. which is not, which is not much different than the text we have Actually, today. Actually, it's quite different. And, no, no, it is not. And the fact that there are two texts, okay, let's move the, let's proving that one is different than the other, shows the, that the Quran we, has evolved. Okay, can we move the debate? Your word on? against okay. mine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, but I mean, would you would you agree at least? I mean, for the Muslims, they don't have a. I mean, uh, they believe that uh, these stories uh, in the Quran about Solomon and whatnot. Um, yes, there are similarities with the Old Testament, but that merely reinforces the fact that they are from the same. Actually, divine these creator. are not similar at all. Um, there's, there are some. Differences. The stories are, are quite different. No, no, there are some similarities and some differences, but the Muslims claim. Can you that show me in my Bible where Solomon was training birds for battle, where okay. he, a hoop of bird comes and talks to him? For example, for example, the infancy. In the, the, the infancy story is apocryphal. So They're um, all apocryphal. Right, they right. were never considered so, to be authoritative so by the Jews. Is, my point is the the, the, certainly the sectarian so, writings so in the New cares, Testament Jay, were never who, considered who to be authoritative by the Christians. Who decides, who decides so, what goes in the Bible? My, my point is what the Muslims believe is that the Quran is the criterion, the Furqan. And in it, you'll have some similarities with the Bible. That which is true in the Bible is confirmed in the Quran. That which is false in the Bible is denied and corrected in the Quran. So they don't have mm. a problem with this uh, borrowing theory uh, because if it uh, seems like it's been borrowed, they'll say, well, that just means well, that it hasn't it's been, been borrowed, confirmed. Khalil, it's been confirmed. Let me speak for myself, mm. Khalil, please, yeah, because right. you, I think you're trying sure. to speak for me. Uh, let me speak for myself. <laughs> Quran is not borrowed. We can substantiate that powerfully through uh, strong evidence. Let, let, me, let me give you a very quick example, very briefly. The story of Joseph in the Quran, chapter 12. Yeah. The story of Joseph does not mention the word Pharaoh once when the, when, when, when the prophet Joseph speaks to the king. He refers to him as king, 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 Malik, 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 Malik. But when we go to Musa, Moses in the in the Quran, he refers to the king as Pharaoh. Okay, for the early Muslims, this wasn't significant. It was okay, Pharaoh, king, who cares? But when we come to the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter forty, Abraham speaks to the king as Pharaoh. Uh, Joseph speaks to the king as Pharaoh. So does Moses. Now, if Muhammad was copying from the Bible, he should have surely copied the similar wording in the Quran, which he did not. Hieroglyphic studies have revealed to us today, uh, um, for, for this, this fact came to light uh, for the first time in the 19th century, that when the Egyptologists uh, read what, what the hieroglyphic writings were saying on the temples, they came to realize that the Pharaoh, Pharaoh as a title wasn't even used for the kings in the Middle Old Kingdom when Joseph was alive. It's, uh, it's an archaeological mistake in the Bible. It's a historical mistake in the Bible. Okay. Uh, People who were known as Hyksos, kings, uh, an Asiatic family, they were governing Egypt at the time. Pharaohs were not even around at the time. In the New Kingdom, uh, the title Pharaoh was used in a loose sense for the king, to refer to the king. The Quran is historically accurate in this, in this sense, but the Bible isn't. If Muhammad copied the Bible, he surely should have put or would have put this word Pharaoh for the king of Joseph, which he did not. So. The references in the Encyclopedia okay, so Biblica. What are, so he used okay, a generic name is what he's saying. But okay, okay. I mean, what okay. about the question, why is Muhammad even talking about Moses? Why is Muhammad even talking about David and Solomon? Well, these, these are, are, these these are, are characters from, who existed. These, They're historical characters. No, but these, <laughs> these, are, these are surely Old Testament characters. Absolutely. And New Testament. So why couldn't Muhammad just come up with his own religion just for the Arab but people? Old Testament why doesn't is have a monopoly to, on truth. 
Old Testament does not have a monopoly on But it on seems truth. like, you know, he's mm -hmm. just going with, he's just jumping now, on the bandwagon. Can you see, this is the evidence he's going to show you. Now, mm -hmm. the, the question that we started out this afternoon was, which is more relevant for the 21st yeah, century? Yeah, let's go on to that. Um, let's um, go on to so some far, of your problems. I don't think with, Adnan has shown uh, me anything that's relevant. What he's trying to say, and he's struggling here, because for Muslims, in order for us to even well, look I'm at this book. I'm not struggling. I've answered all when your it, questions. When you even you look for this book, they're struggling. trying to find not whether or not it's meaningful for me today, whether or not this book is somewhere I think I can practice today. They're saying, we have to even prove that it's actually credible for the people to even accept it. This is what he's trying to do. And that's why he's trying to use his historical evidence. Now, that's okay for Adnan to do. But most people out there are not going to accept that because that's all internal to begin with. Well, leave it to the what, people. What, well, the, the bigger people, question, people what the bigger question is, what I'll go back to when I start out with is, so. can you follow this book today? And do you want to follow this book today? Does it have material in there that stands against what I believe, uh, what I believe God would, n would not dictate? For instance, this book says that if you have uh, if you have thieves in Surah 5, Ayah 38, you must cut off their hands. Mm. Is that relevant for today in the 21st century? Okay. And I would say absolutely okay, not. Let's, let's address that point. Okay. Okay. But um, before I ask Rashid, um, Adnan, sorry, um, it does remind me of a verse in the in the New Testament where Jesus himself well, let, said, let, let "Did let he not say that?" Uh, yes, please yes. do. Yeah. Um, firstly, uh, Jay hasn't dealt with my uh, uh, initial question, which was about the issue of divorce. In the modern world, a woman has a right to divorce. Okay, let me answer I, I, I that one. Let me answer that one. I stand for the right of rights of women. I will definitely come back to the question of thief and what the, yeah, what let's, the punishment let's do that. of the let's thief do that in, about in divorce. Wait, 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 let me complete my question first. Does the Bible allow women to divorce? Does the Bible allow women to have this privilege? Islam does. It is okay. clear in the Quran, chapter 2, Surah Baqarah, verse number 222, 223, and onwards. It talk, 229, sorry. 229 talks about divorce. Okay? Let me so, answer that question. So, does the Bible allow women to divorce? Yeah. Yes very, or no? Very, very yes quickly. No. Does it allow it? Yes and no. Now, that's going to disturb you. Okay. Of course it allows her to divorce. In Where? the case of infidelity. Where? She can divorce. It says so in Matthew. And in the case of infidelity, right. she can divorce. She cannot remarry a again. Am I a Christian now, a let me Christian but second, A Christian woman. Adnan, can you let me, are you going to let me answer? Sure. Are you going to interrupt sure. every time? Sure, but uh, don't spin my question, please. Give I, me a straight answer. Give me a straight answer. Give me the I'm right to answer your a question. A Christian woman, is she allowed to divorce? In Thank you. Did you notice he said Christian woman? Yes. And that's what you need to be careful of. These rules, they're not rules, they're principles that we have in the New Testament. Remember I said at the very beginning, I follow the New Testament. These principles that you see there are for Christians and Christians alone. They're not for other people outside. They're not for those who are not believers. For Christian woman, she may not divorce, nor may a man divorce. Neither can divorce. So how do because, you, how, I don't, I don't, let me finish. Sure, sure, sure. In marriage, the marriage in Christianity is, is elevated to one of the highest, it's, it's considered to be a, uh, one of the sanctums of Christianity. This is seen as a marriage for life. For the two shall become one, and until death do we part. That's the vows I give. See this ring, wedding ring here? When I got married to my wife, Judy, I said to Judy, till death do I part. I will not marry anybody else except for Judy until she dies. Now, if there is infidelity, yes, then we can divorce, but then we are not permitted to remarry again. That is the highest, that basically that puts marriage at a very high plane. Now, Islam allows a man to divorce anytime he wants. Just by simply saying, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. A woman cannot do that. She well, does, cannot say, true, talak, way, talak, true. talak. And that, the, the problem I'm having is already in divorce, you see an inequality built into that. In Christianity, very clearly, a woman and a man can divorce in the case of infidelity. Both of them are e can equally divorce. They may not remarry another uh, once again. Mm -hmm. That shows that they must remain sure. single. Okay. Now, like here's the other thing. Yeah. Does a singleness... Is singleness in Christianity seen as a virtue? And the question and the answer is absolutely yes. We are encouraged by Paul. Paul says, I am single. I would wish you remain single so that you can serve the Lord. Because single people can actually serve the Lord a lot better than even married people because of the fact they are totally geared towards serving Jesus Christ. So even in singleness, which is the, uh, the other side of divorce, even as a single, there is a position and there is a place. And it's actually uplifted by Paul. Jesus was a single man. Some of the greatest people in the history of Christianity have been single people. Some who have been divorced but have not remarried. So I would say yes and no. Okay, it so that's his answer. That. That's his so what do you have to say okay, about that? Okay, his answer doesn't satisfy me at all. Uh, it won't again, because you're a Muslim. a Christian woman, he has put it very nicely. He's made it look, at, uh, look, uh, uh, he's made it look this, um, uh, he's made this particular concept of not divorce, divorcing look very beautiful and charming. However, when you look, at, uh, look into it, you come to realize that a Christian woman does not have a right to divorce. She cannot do, even if you, if there's a bad Christian, I'm not, I'm not saying Christians are bad. 
What I'm saying, if there is a bad fiction, where does it say that? Where does it say that in the Bible? I mean, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter five, verse thirty onwards, it talks about the, the laws of divorce, and Jesus states that a woman is not allowed to divorce, and if she's divorced, if she's divorced, she cannot be remarried. Anyone who remarries her causes her to commit adultery. So, in the Christian world, if a Christian woman has been divorced, she has to become public property. Excuse my language, please. This is what this is the only option left for her. Say that she's again. She's not catered. She's not catered for physically. If she needs a man in her life. She has no option. She has no option left for her. What do you do this with is, all the verses uh, that say, take does, care of the widow and the orphans, finish, over let, and over and let over let again? Finish. How does a Christian woman <laughs> live in, a modern, in the modern world? How does a Christian woman live in the modern world where you have so many temptations? She may look at some... Okay, person. let's if you could address uh, let, the let, other let question. Let me come back to uh, um, uh, the Quran. Quran is so merciful to a woman. Quran states in Surah 2, verse number... 229 the divorce is twice after that either you retain her on reasonable terms or release her with kindness and it is not lawful for you to take back any of your mahr dowry uh, which you have given them except when both parties fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by Allah so Quran allows divorce Quran allows divorce for, for even a woman a woman came to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and she said to him that I do not find a fault in my husband's character However, I fear that I will commit sins because I do not love him. I have no love for him. And the Prophet asked her that would you return the dowry he has given you? And she said, yes, I would return it to him. And the Prophet said, there is a divorce for you because you do not love that man. You may end up committing a sin. Okay, sure. So if you could address the other question that... Uh, can I just answer that real quickly? That, uh, you need to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. The whole chapter is on marriage and divorce. And it says absolutely over and over again, if a brother and his wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him do so. A believer, man or woman. We're not, we're talking this about is not just women. Eh? We are talking about man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. Why did you say this is only for women? Christians, this eh? is man and woman. But, but does that refer Christians. to unbelieving men? Absolutely. Both, yeah. It says believers, if you marry an unbeliever, yeah. and, and as you, you, let's, say, there, let's say, for instance, you're already among believers, but one becomes a Christian. Don't divorce, he says, unless, of course, the, the unbeliever wants you to divorce. Wants no, to divorce. Then you can accept that divorce. Couple. Christian couple. A Christian the couple, man, man a and a woman. A woman. No, no, you're, you're talking about unbelievers. Have this, you read the whole thing? It's talking about both men and women equally. That's the beauty of so this. So Christians are allowed How to do divorce. You, if there is an unbeliever and the unbeliever wants Christ it, whether it's man they, or woman, they, they can. Christian, Christians, Christians. Absolutely. Uh, not not unbelievers. Both Christians, Christians, both Christians. Both Christians. No unbelievers. Are they allowed if to divorce? only in the case of infidelity. And that's what it goes on. Well, again, Jay, you're but, again not giving me a straight answer. We're I said in the case infidelity. of infidelity. That's well, the only apart time. Apart from infidelity, they're not allowed. To they're not allowed to divorce. No. That's it. Okay. No. That's fine. So that's the beauty of it. And that's why I say the sanctity of marriage is one of the greatest things that we have. Because as we're now finding, People that divorce, look what happens to the children, look what's happening already here in this oh, country. Divorce is destroying the, yeah, the it's family. It's not necessarily a good thing. But to the be great able to thing divorce, about yeah. in Christianity is it retains the family. Yeah, um, and more than that, let's, go, let's, let's talk about marriage. Because he asked about divorce, let's go the other side. In Christianity, it's very clear that a man can only marry one wife. Mm. In Islam, you're allowed to have but four. That, I'd like, polygamy, I'd, I'd like polygamy. To, yeah. I'd like to ask him, would, how's he going to defend polygamy? Definitely, I, w I would like sure, him to sure, defend that. Sure. Uh, before he does, I want you to address uh, the other question he raised, which was about cutting the hand of the thief, sure. which is uh, which is seen as very barbaric in the modern world. Or Surah no. 24, Ayah well, 2, and that is beating the yeah, adulterers. Okay. Come on, yes. that is not at all relevant well, first, for today. Firstly, firstly, Jay Smith doesn't have a moral high ground to put this question to me. You know why? Because Jay Smith believes in the Bible as the word of God. Okay? Sure. Uh, do you, Jay, or not? Absolutely, oh, but what right. do I follow? That, okay, that, that, that right, 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 no, no, no. Before you answer, we have to go to a break, unfortunately. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, it's, it's a necessity. Um, so uh, I hope, uh, viewers, uh, you've, been, um, you've been entertained thus far, and I hope you'll uh, join us uh, after the break uh, and continue this uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome back to the Alternative Platform. We're going to get s stuck straight in. Um, Adnan, I'd like to um, ask you uh, one of the questions that Jay mentioned, and in fact is a very popular um, criticism against um, the Quran uh, and Islam that um, you know there are so many verses that are so barbaric, so backward, so horrendous. You know, in the modern world, um, how can you justify such a thing? For example, um, you're supposed to cut the hand of the thief. How do you defend that? Firstly, I mean, I was going to raise the question that. Jay doesn't have a moral high ground to put this question to me because he believes in the Bible. If we go to the Bible in the Old Testament, which is the scripture, okay, uh, before even Jay says that we don't follow that code anymore, it, it's not relevant for us anymore because Jesus Christ came 
uh, killed himself on the cross and he has paid for our sins. So Didn't we don't kill himself. Do, uh, sorry, I mean, he was killed on the cross. Mm -hmm. um, um, and he paid for our crimes. So law no longer applies to us, as Paul put it in the book of Romans 2. Okay, now my contention is that Paul himself in the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, stated that all scripture, all scripture is God breathed. And it is good for correction, education and righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if that's true, and I assume that you believe in mm -hmm. that particular verse to be from God Almighty. Okay. If that's true, Paul was talking about the Old Testament. All mm -hmm. the commentators are unanimous on this point because the New Testament didn't even exist at the time. Paul died in the, uh, the year 60 CE and got, the Gospel of Mark was written uh, in the year 60 CE. So, I mean, depending on what opinion you follow on, on this. So... Paul was talking about the Old Testament. If that's true, in the Old Testament we find all these penalties and more, mm -hmm. and more. We, in the Old Testament we find that you can burn women alive. Really? You can burn them alive, yes, yes, yes. This is why the Christians in, <laughs> in the that. medieval era and in the early modern era, uh, when they were burning witches alive and some of the heretics alive, what was the precedent for them? The precedent for them was the Bible itself. They went to the Bible to substantiate their actions. Uh, for example, book of Leviticus chapter 20. Uh, ch chapter 21 verse 9 states that if a woman, not a man, if a girl profaneth her father by sleeping with another man, and the father is a priest, she is to be burnt alive. Now, this, can I, can I answer well, this? Well, you can answer this, but let me come back to this question. So, um, What about the cutting the hand of the thief? Well, is coming it? To that. Um, this, is, mm -hmm. this is the point I'm making that Jay doesn't have a moral high ground to ask me this question. Right. But I will answer this question, uh, nevertheless. Um, we are following Jesus Christ. If that helps Jay in any way. Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 30 again stated that if your hand causes, to, causes you to commit sin, remove it. Cut, cut it, it off. Cut it off. Yeah. Cut it off. Okay. What, what is wrong with the, what the Muslims are doing? If they believe in this. Okay. My second contention. Even if Jay doesn't accept my response, uh, um, which, which I gave from the Bible. We go to the Quran. Now which thief is to be punished in this way? Uh, a thief who goes and steals a uh, loaf of bread to feed himself and his family? No, no. This is a professional thief who is thieving in order to cause chaos in a society. Now, Western academics, modern historians and philosophers are writing books on the phenomena of uh, chaos, order and violence. There's a book published by the Cambridge University Press in the year 2008 and a, a major academics in this field came together and they titled the book Chaos, Order and violence and in this book they state that in order to establish peace in a society a state must threaten those with violence who are planning to cause chaos in a society so this thre threat may come in in any form or shape okay so this threat must serve as a deterrent if it doesn't serve as a deterrent then there's no point of having this threat so islamic viewpoint on this is that we use these harsh suitably harsh punishments as a deterrent against those who are planning to cause chaos in a society. For example, thieves, robbers, rapists, murderers, all these people are threatened by these suitably harsh punishments so that they put their crimes to rest. This is my uh, answer. The first answer was from the Old Testament. All scripture is God's breath. Mm -hmm. The second answer is from the New Testament. Jesus himself said, if your uh, hand causes you to commit sin, cut it off. The third answer was, from the Western academics and philosophers who are writing to substantiate the case of Islam. Jay, please respond. Very good. Uh, I thought it was fascinating that to answer his question, he had to go back and he says that I have a, real, uh, a much stronger problem. Now, Adnan has, knows the answer, what I'm going to give, and many other people have heard this, but I, need, I think the viewers need, out there need to know. The Old Testament uh, as, uh, started to be written down uh, in the period of 1400 B.C. Uh, Moses would be the, uh, the, the author of the, the Pentateuch, the five, first five books, and they continued to be written down over up until 400 B.C. Uh, so they, that, that was then closed from 400 B.C. For the next 400 years, there was no uh, revelation. That material that is there, especially the mosaic material, which is what he's referring to, the uh, mosaic code, the, the, the Deuteronomy laws, the Levitical laws that he referred to, those are for 1400 B.C. and must remain in 1400 B.C. because God was doing a specific thing at a, as, at a specific place for a specific time. They, that, but is that, that your interpretation? Uh, uh, that's what all Christians believe. Now, everybody, all, all Christians would look and see that there is progressive revelation. 
revelation. That, but the Jews let me, let me, may I finish? May I finish? Mm -hmm. This is called progressive revelation. Well, I have to respond to this one. The I'm Jews still believe that that's uh, ad adequate for them today. So this yeah. is more of a question the Jews need to be asked. Do they believe in these, uh, what I would say, archaic practices? But, but do you have any verses that say that they were circumstantial? And not universal. Christ and not, over and over. I mean, there's so many verses saying, "I've come to, I've come not to, I've come to fulfill the law." And he says, "For you have heard it say, but I now say." And the first over part and is, over "I have come to abolish." The, but the first part is, "I think not that I have come to abolish the law." Yes. I have come now, to fulfill it. Right, exactly. Yes, right. So, so, when so, you come, so, so let's, 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 let's address the first part. I've not come to abolish. Please, so please, what does he say? Not even a jot shall be t removed until heaven and earth pass and away. Everybody, not even a tittle. Would you let said. me finish this? Yes, so okay. please address that. Let me finish this. Mm -hmm. sure. So when you look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament is a revelatory, it's for a revelation for the Mosaic period. Always in the Old Testament, it says, but there will come someone who then this whole revelatory period is based on, and it is for, and that's the Messiah, the, as you know, the al Masih. When the Messiah comes, he will fulfill all that the prophets have foretold. And that's why in Jesus' whole ministry, you say, what verse? Almost every other verse, Jesus is saying, for you have heard it say in the Old Testament, for you have heard it say in the Old Law, but I now say. What is he saying there? He is giving a new covenant. That's why we call it the New Testament. The New Testament means the new law. The new covenant, that's why the whole second half is that which fulfills that which has come before. And in every case, he shows how it was used to be, but it now is. And in every case, when he looks at the two uh, covenants, that which Jesus said, that which Jesus did, is by far a much more benevolent, it's much more benign, it's not, it, there's this violence, it's no longer need. And that's why we don't use these. How, how would you let deal me, with the so for instance, if you ask me as a Christian, do I follow that uh, Mosaic law? If I were to follow that Mosaic law today, Day, then I would have to start circumcising again? No. Mm -hmm. No longer is circumcision to be in the body. It is not going to be the circumcision of the heart. Do I look at those revelations that are written on tablets? Right? Jeremiah 35, 31. But, but, but Jesus you from circumcised, Gonorrhea right? Just, but, okay, listen, but, listen, listen. listen. So, circumcision, I am circumcised, yes. As an American, almost all Americans was get Jesus circumcised. circumcised. Wow. Absolutely, he was, because right. he came as a so, Jew. So if it was good enough for him, why is it not good enough for Christians? Because it was no, because as for the, that which is circumcised, circumcision of the body, which was a sign of a covenant it in the Old Testament, now the circumcision would be of the heart, which is basically that which uh, stipulates that the circumcision of the heart is the faith in the person of Jesus Christ. But let me answer the question sure. rather than going on to a whole other subject. Sure. When, if I were to be, uh, follow the Old Testament covenant, then I would not only have to start circumcising again, which we don't do now that Jesus has come, uh, we, I would have to start sacrificing again, which we don't do now because sacrifice, the final sacrifice was in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, I, my rebellious sons, I have to, three sons, uh, thank God the rebellious, I'd have to execute them according to Mosaic law. We don't follow Mosaic law because it is a law that was based on 1300, 1400 BC. Everything I now do is for the person of Jesus, I follow the person of Jesus Christ and that new covenant. That's why every text that he's going to give to me, I say, yes, it is still authoritative. No one says it's not authoritative. Is, is no it, one said it's not inspired. Is it barbaric? But it, absolutely, it, but because we're now following the Jesus Christ. A barbarian at the time Hold on a minute. Be follow the person of no, no, Jesus Jay, Christ. Jay, Jay, you made a I'm very, not, you, I'm made, not. you made a very controversial Hold on a minute. Statement. Hold on a minute. That it law was, was barbaric? It was ab absolutely today. It is no longer no, no, needed. No, no, no. That, at that time, that was that law barbaric? And God was using that at that time because he was walking with very barbaric people. So that means, but logically, that means God was barbaric at that time. And but now God has changed. So the, I mean, God has changed. I mean, this, we have changed. But 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 this flies in the face of. But this. But no, wait, wait, wait. I want to ask you now. I want to ask you, please. I want to ask you. One of the main beliefs about God is that He is omnipotent, He's omniscient, and He's immutable. Immutable, meaning He doesn't change. He doesn't change. He's not subject to change. Absolutely. I mean, but in the Bible, there are verses that attest Malachi to that as well. 3, 6. Right, yes. right. Now, what you're saying is that all these old laws, yes, it's true. You agree with that. You can't deny it, obviously, because it's in the Old Testament. And some of them are very horrendous. Burning women, according to him. No, no, killing, be careful about the burning right? women. Right. But, uh, okay, but, but there are true. others. There are others. There are, there are others. Right? No, no, but there are others. Nobody says Stoning. in the Bible. No, 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 no. Hold uh, on. Uh, uh, but besides that, the whole thing, the whole thing we're talking about, if you call them barbaric, and the word is, he wants to use the word barbaric, maybe I should be a caution. Today, it is barbaric, yes. Yes, of course it is. But what was God doing back then? Listen, eradicating uh, the entire city of Saul called Sodom and Gomorrah, so we would call Jay, is barbaric Jay, so all scripture today. Is not good right. for well, well, listen, would, you right. would you let me finish? Would right. you let me finish? You ask, how can how does it that God changes between the Old and New Testament? Right. I would say it's not God that's changing. Who's changing there? It's the children of Israel that are changing. Now let me give you an example. I have three sons. I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, let's. At one time, my my youngest son was five years old. Uh, my next son was eleven years old and my next son was 15. Now my five-year-old son 
is like the children of Israel in 1400 BC. They are young, he's young, he's naive. I, I don't let him go outside the house, he'll probably be killed by a bus. I have to protect him. I have a whole lot of rules and regulations for him that are very strict, and yes, you might call them barbaric. But I have to because he's such a young, naive man, just like the Israelites who have just been spent 400 years in captivity. When they came out of Egypt, they needed to be protected. Therefore, an awful laws and institutions don't make sense for us today. Let me finish, let me finish. Don't call it barbaric. It's something that was needed well, at that time. You already said God was barbaric at that time. Listen, listen, uh, maybe I shouldn't have used that word. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't use that word. Okay. Uh, correct if I do. Okay. But we would consider them barbaric today, yes. Okay. Now, okay. So, let, so let me, may, 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 may I finish? Sure, sure, please, sure, please sure. let me finish. Sure, sure. Now, I have another son who's 11 years old. He's six years, actually he's, he would be 12 years old because he's another seven years older. My 12 year old son, I let him go all over the city. He's, he can take the buses all over London. I, he's, I have a completely different laws and rules for him. Sure. Now okay. let me finish. Yeah. That's like the people in the first century, AD. The New Testament, the New Covenant is like my, uh, you might say, I'm um, using an example, my 12 year old son. It, is a, it has an awful lot more freedoms, but it has an awful lot more responsibilities too with those freedoms. Now who has changed? Am I the same father of my five-year-old and my 12-year-old? Absolutely. Have I changed? No. But I have different rules for my five-year-old okay, than sure, I have for my 12-year-old. Sure, okay. Let me finish. Let me yeah, finish. I'm yeah. not finished. I have a third son. My third son but Jay, you got, we is 60, okay. is 60 years old. Let's get the, what okay. you're telling me sure. is that my third son, another four, another four years, and in this case, let's talk about 600 years um, with Islam coming in. My, uh, it, it, my six, uh, what would happen if I started treating my 16 year old like my five year old and started imposing all these rules, we're laws, and okay, education? But, you know, but that, but, but, much but, like what Islam but, does. But, but the, this is what Islam no, does. No, and but, this is why. There's a false is, analogy here. I want to ask you now. I want oh, to ask you now. I want to get it clear. I want to respond. Right, because sure, may I finish please, this? Please, to be fair. Can I be finished? Right. Can I finish? You're taking too long, Jay. Listen, we, we listen to you. To, uh, okay, to okay. Like okay. please finish. Very things. quickly, very quickly. What you have then is you have a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 16-year-old. I have complete different laws for each one of them as they progress. Sure. And that's what God does. He progresses in Scripture. He also right. progresses in time from 1400 right. B.C. But to the first But can I just ask you AD. very quickly, very quickly. What Muslims want me to do is go sure. back to that Mosaic okay, time. I just, I just want to ask you. God doesn't would, work well, that way. Okay, but there are certain laws that are universal and immutable. Well, for example, to kill an innocent person 1400 years ago, 2000 years ago, to kill an innocent person who's done nothing wrong, to kill him back then 6,000 years ago, is just as wrong as it is to kill an innocent person today. Would you agree with that? It depends on what you define innocent. All right. Okay. See, we're gonna have okay. But, 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 but if he, if he had done nothing wrong, if, but to be okay. Fair, okay. Let's say, sure. be careful sure. of that because okay. that's such a nebulous statement. Okay. Innocence. My, what do you mean by innocence? Well, all of because fourteen hundred years ago, sure. for innocence was not what it is today. Jay, you're, the, the whole story you gave us is beautiful. It's fascinating. Uh, but it still you like my three sons, don't it, you? It, it, I'll have it, to introduce them to you sometime. Yeah, sure, sure. I would love to meet them. It doesn't answer my question. My question is. Does the verse from 2 Timothy 3.16 stand today? Absolutely. All it stands today. And did I not okay, say once that? Again, all scripture is God-breathed. Yes, but is okay, it all to be practiced the same? Let me, finish, let me finish. It's good for education, correctness, yes. and righteousness. Yes. All scripture. Absolutely. Without an exception. Absolutely. So burning the witches alive Absolutely. is good for righteousness not today. Not because we don't but, apply but, that today. You're, changing now. you're saying that law is barbaric I'm not today. Being, I'm not, but, listen to me again. J J J my question May is, I answer that? Sure. Very simply, all yes. scripture is God breathed and is ben beneficial. So we have to go back to the Old Testament. We have sure. to go back and see what God was doing so back was then. It but we don't today? apply that today. Is, was that? No, I'm not going to use the word barbaric. You, you should. No, I should. said it's barbaric. Listen, today. I took back that word. Okay, don't. Okay. Take, it's sure. today by today's standard. Of course, it's barbaric. But okay. I don't but say God's that barbaric. Not, it's not, that, if that's in, the case, Jay, in 1400 BC, it was it's not barbaric. Good, it's not good for education, correct, correcting, and righteousness. But if it's barbaric today. Isn't Here you're going. Okay. You're not. You're not understanding. Listen, I can't get this more simple than it is. Please sure. understand me on sure. that. Now listen to me carefully. It's for 1400 BC. We leave it in 1400 BC. What God was okay. doing can in I, the Mosaic can, can period, we leave there. Can I ask let me you finish. Right. In the same way that when you read history today in, in in Britain, do you go back and say that is terrible? what they did back uh, in, in a thousand years ago here in Britain. We don't do that today anymore. But you don't sit there and apply f um, 20th century standards on a, 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 a thousand. Well, what, what, I can't accept, what I can't accept is a God I mean, who doesn't change back then should have the same moral code as a God today. For example, in Deuteronomy it is stated uh, when God uh, uh, said uh, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 16, however, in the cities of the nations, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Do not leave alive anything that breathes, completely destroy them, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, etc. That's pretty extreme. And it's that's, hugely extreme. I mean, that is that is something that we cannot justify saying, well, back then but, it was okay, but, but, but not today. Khalid, I to mean, fair, this is the same reason, in, the same token, in the same token, right. I would say when Jesus Christ came, we are not permitted to use a sword. Put away your sword. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. But your prophet Muhammad no, but, in but, 627, but, 
and no, took no, 800 sure, men, sure. slit their throats, took their women but, as concubines but, 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 and their children no, as my, slaves. My problem, that's barbaric. My problem because is that, when you follow no, Jesus but, Christ, you don't yeah. do that anymore. What, so I would throw the same sure, question at you. Sure, sure, because what, what you have done with your prophet Muhammad is gone back to that period. Sure, sure. Can I to so, me, that's barbarism. So, but but, but for this? me, I mean, I, I get the understanding of a schizophrenic kind of God who in the Old Testament was very barbaric, very cruel, and he was very merciless. But in the New Testament, suddenly he changes all lovey dovey. It doesn't make any sense. When it comes back, let me ask you. It doesn't make sense. In Surah 7, in Surah 11, and in Surah 20, you will find the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Read it. Yeah. What did God do in Sodom and Gomorrah? Did He not destroy all men, women, and children? The very yeah. same thing that yeah. you're complaining about. Did He also, in Surah 7, uh, I'm sorry, Surah 11, does it not even have there where uh, Lot had his girls and he said, go take my, my, my two girls, rape them you if you want to. No, no, it's in your Quran. No, 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 it's not, it's not, not in the Quran. the Quran. That's a lie. It's not the, show me the words rape in the Quran. It's not rape. I'm sorry. There take them. He said, you, take you, them. Why lie What's why the purpose? Listen, I know, what do you take the girls for? Okay. What do you take what, the girls what, for? Quran, Quran doesn't say rape. This is your spin. Well, actually, you know, I, I, actually, the Bible says. If I'm, I, I have to say this. Is, actually, that, is that not barbaric actually, today? Actually, well, but actually, no, the Bible says oh. when you go to. I would never are you, say anything in the Quran. Are you, will, are you willing then? Are you saying that what Lot was doing by giving his daughters actually, to the what, men? Actually, what the Quran does take them instead. I tell you, I tell you what the Quran That's does. That's not barbaric today. Jay, what the Quran does not say, which what what the Bible does say in Deuteronomy uh, 21, uh, verse 10. When you go to war against your enemies, speaking to the Israelites, and the Lord your God delivers them into your hands, and you take captives, if you notice a among the captives, a beautiful woman, and are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home and make her shave her head, trim her nails, etc. That's pretty. Well, that's pretty. Okay. Said Surah 4, yeah. 24. So, but, 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 it says, okay. Those so, you can okay, take forget, those women okay. with your right my hand possess is, my point is, it. It's in your Quran. Quran. Okay, sure, sure. So, so you've got the so, same thing. No, so, so why okay, are you calling exactly. that barbaric? Now, this is a common tactic that no, no, Christians no, use. No, can I say something? You are calling it barbaric. Okay, so let's say now. Am I debating against both of you again? I just want to ask you something. Khalid, am I debating against both of you? I'm asking you a question. Forget the Quran. No, no. I want to forget the Quran if because the, Quran the very is, okay. thing you have tried to sure, use my sure. Bible no, 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 no. I'm asking you Quran. to defend. Forget the Quran. If the Quran is immoral, let it be. Let Absolutely, it, be. it is but immoral. But then now you have now the onus is on you to defend yourself. Ah, forget, you see. thank you. How let me defend you, it now. How do you defend that? That is that no, sounds. Before he def does that, can I very have a simply? Fair okay, sure. Can I have a fair sure, chance? Sure, uh, for, sure. For, for, Go ahead. No, wait. Are we going to have two against one here? No, no, no. I'm just asking Because now we're having two ganging up against me. You're both asking questions. You're both confronting my scriptures. If it's going to be him, I'm going to debate. I'll debate him. Or if it's going to be him, I'm debate. Who am I debating now? No, 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 you're Who asking questions. You're answering questions. No, I'm you're debating me because questions. you're debating right. me now. If you're, if you're going to take on this debate, I will answer your questions. Right. And let's go back to Deuteronomy sure. and let's ask and see. Can I, if, can I respond first? I, but no. Okay, can I, let I, him just answer quickly. Very We're quickly. having a debate here. No, no, no. It's no. obvious that he wants to debate, debate me. No, I'm just trying to make it interesting. Khalid. I mean, you've got the Holy Spirit in you. You shouldn't Thank worry. God you shouldn't worry. You can take 10 million of us on. You can take 10 million of us on. Isn't it great that I can? But let's answer that question. Very simply, when you go back to Deuteronomy, as I said earlier, what God was doing back in Deuteronomy, we are not, it's not for us to say that is barbaric or is barbaric any more than what is God, what your God, uh, it's not my God, the God uh, of uh, Allah of the Quran is doing with the Jews there in 627 when he eradicates an what entire was the cause? When what was it, the cause? Who cares? It was six men who were guilty, but the whole tribe had to be that's responsible. Not that's is that not wrong? When you look and see, how do you feel about that? Oh, that's how terrible because we don't so do that God today. Did a terrible, no, no, so you're saying God did a no, terrible thing? No, your prophet did a terrible thing. It was Muhammad who did this. I'm talking about this. It was Muhammad who then took those Jews, who took those Jews, yet it was only six men that we know that actually went against Muhammad. Th that's not true. That's if you true. look you at the Ibn Ishaq, Jay, if you look Jay, in his biography, you'll see. You had a debate with me in Christian Premier Radio. I played a recording by yourself and you made a claim that none of the Islamic sources claim that uh, the Jews ever provoked Muhammad. And when I pulled out the text, you, you were sweating. You were sweating because you, you know you had misquoted the Islamic text. You're doing that again. They went the, against Muhammad. Six of them went against Muhammad. And I no, agree no, with no, that. No, six of them. The entire tribe. Do you want me to give you their Qurayla? names? I okay, can give you Jay, their names. Uh, Give, give, give me time to look for it. Have you, have you, have you read this book? Have I've read, read the whole book. book. Yes, whole I have. Book? I read if the whole book. If you read the whole book, did you read the story yeah, of so Banu Qurayza? I did read the story of Banu Qurayza. I read the story of Banu Qurayza. Let yeah. me just get it. Hold what on a minute. What is the context of the story? Why, why were they May I tell you? dealt with in this way? Why? Surah, uh, what, what page 450. Jay, what does the book say? A number of Jews who no, no, had fought. Jay, would you let me what read this? Book, no, no. What does the book the say? The battle about of the, the story? ditch. The battle of the ditch. The cause. The cause. In, the cause. I'm the cause, giving the cause. to you right now. Okay. Okay. A number of Jews who had formed a party against the apostle, among whom were, and the names are uh, Al Halkaik, Al Nadr, uh, Huyai bin. Uh, excuse me for my pronunciation. Uh, Kinana. Let's just do the first part. Salam, Huyai, Kinana, 
Hauda, okay, Abu know Amir, we don't need to know Bal so don't have that's, much time. and Wa'il. That's seven no. of them. They were the they ones were the that stood against the, the tribe. tribe. Okay. They were the leaders of the tribe. Now, how many people were then there? They were the ones that were guilty, right? No, that's not true. They were the read ones the that were guilty. You ha have you read the whole story? The whole story says they were the Jay, ones that were guilty. Jay, I, I now, ask everyone to go so, okay, read the you whole know, story. Okay, 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 I, now, let me ask you this. Sure, sure. If six people, or might possibly a seventh, right. are were the ones that actually went against Muhammad, mm -hmm. should the whole families, all women, women and children, should all men have their throats slit? This is my problem. Is that not barbaric? What I'm trying to get at, really. Is that not what your prophet did? Is that what your prophet did? A skeptic would look at this and say, you're both as bad as each other. Yeah. The Quran says, it, you know, uh, or not if, if, if Islam, but this is the thing. Jesus, Jesus says, put away your sword. No, but Jesus, Jesus says, even those who were attacking him, Jesus said, even those who were defending him, people attacking well, him. Well, actually, on that note, didn't, the Jesus say, didn't Jesus say, think not that I've come to bring peace? I've not I come to bring, bring peace, bring but force, to bring division. Bring sword, actually. Bring, bring, and the sword, Look at the no, next no, verse. In, in other Bibles, I have come in against other father, against yes. son, mother, against yes. daughter. Who's the sword going to be used by? Us? The, the sword's going to be but, against but Jesus, us. But Jesus said, Look I didn't come chapter. to bring peace. Look at, it's Matthew 10. Mm. Look at the whole chapter. Yeah, sure. He said, you are going to be flogged. Right. You're going to be hated. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be jailed. You're right. going to be sure, killed. Sure. For I have he, not he, come to bring peace. I've come yes, to bring yes. sword. Right. I've come to get okay, so We don't have much time. Family's right. going to be destroyed. Have, right. Jesus See, that's passion. the beauty of it. Jesus says, we're going to be have the sword against us. Well, Nowhere can we use the sword. Is that the beauty of it? He said, I came to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already kindled. I mean, that sounds pretty. Jesus? Yeah, he said that. And what is he talking about? like he came to spread love. Did he do that? that did Jesus, ever use, a, did Jesus so, ever use a sword? Anyway. Did right. Jesus ever use a sword, Khalid? Since we're debating now. No, no he didn't. Okay, thank God. Did yeah, Muhammad but, use a sword? But he did ask, did Muhammad he did ask his the disciples sword? to bring the sword. No, did he? And, and what happened but, the next day? Right. When the Jesus disciples used the sword, what right. did Jesus do? Okay, guys, he said, put right, it away. We've run out of time now, unfortunately. But this has been great. Really great. I've really enjoyed myself. <laughs> and I have to thank you, Jay, for that. Thank you very much. Are we going to um, have a summation here? Uh, yes, we will. Yes, we will. Um, so I want to start with you, um, Jay, if you'd like. Uh, please, uh, unfortunately, we don't have much time. You've got one minute to uh, summarize uh, what you've learned from this and what you'd like the viewers to take away from this. Um, so please take it away. I want to talk to the viewers right now. And I want to just say uh, to the people who are listening, what you've heard today, and it's been engaging, please don't get upset about it. We're both passionate men. Adnan and I are very good friends. Uh, we do this all the time. Be careful what you've heard today. It's important that we're asking which is the re more relevant for today. Which of these two books is more relevant? You've heard Adnan strenuously try to say that this book is more relevant. We haven't had time to really confront many of the problem passages. Uh, that most of the Bible, has, a lot of the Bible, almost in, entirely the only the Old Testament has been confronted. You won't find anything irrelevant about the New Testament. You won't find anything irrelevant about Jesus Christ. That's the beauty of Jesus. And that's the beauty of being a Christian. Because I follow Jesus. I don't follow Moses or Joshua or anybody in the Old Testament, but I go back to those scriptures to see what God is doing. They are still authoritative, but they do not, f f they do not tell me how I'm to live today. How I'm to live today is how Jesus lived. Jesus never used the sword. Muhammad did. Jesus brought peace. Muhammad did not. Jesus gave us eternal life. Muhammad, did. I don't see anywhere where you get eternal life in the Quran, but you can with Jesus. And that's why I say, talk about relevancy. Which is the most relevant? Which is the one that really people need to do today? Come on back to Jesus. Come on thank back to the Thank you very much, Jay. And Adnan, if you'd like to wrap it up, please, Listen with the, the final words. Rahim, thank you very much, Khalil, for your patience. Uh, and thank you very much, Jay, for attending today's debate. It has been fascinating. Um, my contention is that Jay hasn't answered my questions uh, or the questions of any Muslims for that matter. Um, Christianity, even if it's peaceful, uh, it doesn't make any difference to me, uh, even if it is. Uh, firstly, it, it is not because the Christian history is uh, uh, speaking for itself. If we go into the Christian history, we realize that crusades were done by the Christians, mass burning of witches, mass burning of heretics, some uh, uh, religiously oriented uh, massacres were carried out by the Christians and substantiated through the Bible. From the Bible, they found verses and they used these verses to kill all these people. So Islamic history speaks for itself. When Muhammad Sallallahu came to power, what happened? When the Muslims went into the land uh, uh, of Syria, what happened? Dionysius of Tel Mahari, a Christian uh, historian, writes that when Muslims came to the city of Damascus, the people of Damascus opened the gates for them and welcomed them as liberators from the Christian persecution of their own brothers, the Romans. John of Nikiu, the Egyptian writer who was a contemporary of uh, the early Islamic conquest, writes that when the Muslims came into Egypt, the Coptic Christians joined the ranks of the Muslims against their own Christian brothers who were again the Romans. And then I have to finish because my time has run out. Again, I would like all people to go back to the history of Islam and Christianity and see uh, which religion 
manifested okay. itself. Thank you very much. Peacefully. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you very much, my guests, uh, Jay Smith and uh, Adnan Rashid. Um, mm -hmm. I hope the viewers have enjoyed uh, today's uh, explosive, and we did promise it to be a very explosive and very lively and entertaining uh, discussion. Um, and I do apologize if I've seemed biased or almost, but I, I, I was just so enthralled by uh, the discussion. Um, and uh, please forgive me if, uh, if I've made any mistakes uh, or if I've done any wrong. Uh, I hope the viewers will tune in in a couple of weeks' time for our next episode. Um, and next week it will be Your Life in the UK and uh, as you know uh, the alternative platform will be here in two weeks time. Uh, so thank you very much once again viewers and my guests and uh, we hope to see you again in a couple of weeks. Time.